Good morning. Welcome to our worship. It is a pleasure to have you join us here at our Redeemer Lutheran Church in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. The sun is shining and we're grateful that uh, you're able to be with us today. We also want to welcome those who join us by live stream or listening to our Redeemer Lutheran Radio, our internet radio station. It's a great day to be together to worship the Lord and we welcome one and all. As we worship today, uh, I'll be continuing the sermon series entitled, Jesus Changes Everything. And we see that was the case on a day that was not so nice, very long ago on the Sea of Galilee when a sudden storm came and threatened the lives of his disciples. But Jesus was in the boat and he made all the difference for them, even as he does for us. In the hymns today, you're going to be noticing a reference to storms because we know that storms in life come, storms of many different types. We begin by singing together, Preserve Your Word, O Savior, uh, hymn 658. You may remain seated as we sing.
Let us rise as we worship the Lord. The order of service today is the Order of Matins, a service of morning praise. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in His hand. The strength of the hills is His also. Thus He is His for He made it and His hand form a dry dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. <coughs> let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, the people rose up against us. Then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger kindled against us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You may be seated as we sing hymn number 765 in the Lutheran service book, God Moves in a Mysterious Way.
I invite you to turn to the back uh, of the bulletin as we have the scripture readings. We thank Terry Brown for being our lecture today. And you'll also notice on the preceding the page the artist rendering of Jesus stilling the storm uh, as he and the disciples were in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Good morning. morning. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is found in Job 38, beginning at verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Does this dress for action like a man? I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Or what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from its womb, when I made clouds its garments, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further. And where shall your proud waves be stayed? This is the word of the Lord. The epistle for today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. By great endurance in afflictions, hardship, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapon of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors, yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own afflictions. In return, I speak to you as children. Widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. You'll notice in the uh, second reading, which Terry just shared with us, there are a number of conjunctions. Uh, The word yet, a three-letter word that shows what a difference it made uh, in the life of St. Paul that Jesus was with him to preserve his life. And so it is also with us. Jesus makes all the difference. We see that in the gospel reading today as well, the story of Jesus stilling the storm, the gospel for this fifth Sunday after Pentecost, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. 
And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? But thou, O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. <laughs> glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. You may be seated now as we join in the sermon here. Lord reaches out his hand to save us from the storms of life. Hymn number 739, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. So, we continue the sermon series, Jesus Changes Everything. If you look at the bulletin cover, and for the sake of those who are not here with us and can't see it, it's a picture of a beautiful still lake in the mountains, um, but we know what can happen. All of a sudden, the waters can get pretty wild, the waves can be high and can threaten life. And so it is that on the basis of today's text, we will consider the theme, Surviving the Storm. A great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat, 
so that the boat was already filling, but Jesus was in the stern. He awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. In this sermon series, we're looking at one of the appointed readings each week that uses a conjunction, one of those little three-letter words, to show how Jesus makes all of the difference for you and me. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we prefer the still waters. We like the sunny days, the times when everything seems to be going well. But we're also certainly aware that storms come of a great variety and a varying strength. We're grateful, Lord, that in the gospel reading today, we are reminded and assured that our Savior, Jesus Christ, speaks the authoritative word and stills the storms. So we pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to survive the storms of life through faith in your Son, Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, those of us who live in Florida are certainly no stranger to storms, are we? We know that hurricane season began on June 1st. We had some tropical weather moving this way. Fortunately, it didn't amount to anything. But we know they're predicting it to be one of the most uh, devastating hurricane seasons on record. Since 1851, approximately 500 tropical or subtropical cyclones have affected the state of Florida, resulting in 10,000 or more deaths, most of those occurring before hurricane hunter flights began in the year 1943. Now we have more warning, and we thank God for that. But more storms hit Florida than any other state, and since the mid-1850s, only 18 hurricane seasons have passed without a storm affecting the state of Florida. You remember what the strongest one was? I don't think anybody here was uh, alive back in 1935, but it was the great 1935 Labor Day hurricane, which crossed the Florida Keys. It had a record low pressure of 892, making it the strongest on record. Now, anyone who's gone through a hurricane will remember the experience. I'm happy to say that even though I've lived for 43 years in the state of Florida, knock on wood, I am a hurricane dodger. I have not been in a hurricane warning. Uh, I don't remember if Irma ever generated a warning here in Jacksonville. I don't think it did. Um, <clears throat> but I'm grateful for that, and of course, I'd like to preserve that good record, wouldn't you? But we know from history that, uh, my, that uh, Florida, from Miami to Jacksonville, has taken some hard hits. So some of you have personal remembrances of Hurricane Andrew, for example, 1992, hitting Homestead and other areas of South Miami. There was Charlie, which destroyed Punta Gorda. Michael, which hit Mexico Beach in Panama City as a Category 5, or Ian, which devastated Fort Myers and also brought record flooding to inland areas. I remember Van Cusserow, a member of our church in Miami, who uh, told me about the great 1926 hurricane which, which hit Miami Beach and the city of Miami with winds of 150 miles an hour and an 11-foot storm surge. He related how as a kid he would row a boat across the bay from Miami to Miami Beach, which at the time was just a spit of sand. His mother built the ninth building on Miami Beach, and apparently they were living there at the time that the 1926 hurricane hit, and he related having to go from one building to another to trying to survive that storm. Well, many people have wondered if they would survive such a storm as they went through a hurricane or other frightening a type of storm. And we hope and pray that we will never have such a storm hit Jacksonville. But we prepare because we know that a storm warning can come. Well, there was no warning that night on the Sea of Galilee as Jesus and his disciples set out across 
the sea. It's also called Lake Gennesaret. It's a large inland lake. Uh, it's difficult to see across it because it is very large. Um, our Lord had grown up only 20 miles or so from there in the town of Nazareth, so he was very familiar with the Sea of Galilee. And you'll recall that that's also where he called his first disciples, saying, come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Well, Peter, James, and John, they provided, they, they prized themselves, and Andrew, of course, they prized themselves on how well they knew their trade, and also knew the Sea of Galilee, Lake Gennesaret. Uh, well, that night things were different. It was a storm unlike any they'd experienced before, so that these, these well-experienced fishermen feared for their own life. It had been a long day for Jesus and the disciples, preaching and teaching alongside the lake. Uh, and so they set off by, by boat, and it's not surprising that Jesus fell fast asleep because, after all, according to his human nature, he knew what it meant to be tired, and having spoken to the large crowds that, do, that day, he needed some rest. Well, severe storms are not uncommon on the Sea of Galilee. Um, I'll never forget my first trip there and how we had to take shelter inside of the boat the tour boat that goes across the Sea of Galilee because of, as we got to the center, sure enough, the rain and the, the thunder began and we had to go inside the boat. Well, we're told that the lake, that Sea of Galilee, is like a, a bowl with snow-capped Mount Hermon to the northeast and that cold air often rushes down on that lake and it can cause those sudden storms. Uh, the waves can get up to eight or even 11 feet well, first century boats were typically 26 feet long, seven feet wide, and only four and a half feet high. They were designed for throwing nets over the side, not for surviving a major storm. Well, these experienced fishermen who knew all about the storms on the sea feared for their life this time because it was very different. Clarence Iceberg, in his book, The Storms of Life, describes the situation this way. These seasoned sailors struggle to get the sail down. Rain fell from the night sky in buckets. There's no light from the moon. It's dark, only the lightning flashes break the blackness of the night. The boat is buffeted like a kite in the wind. Matthew, the tax collector, tries to keep his lunch down. The thunder roars. The wind is screaming. The shouts of the disciples are carried away on the wind. The storm rages for hours. Fear of death overwhelms. No one can bail fast enough. How can Jesus still be asleep, they wonder. Jesus kept on sleeping as they strained at the oars. He kept on sleeping as they struggled to lower that sail. He kept on sleeping as they bailed water out of the ship while even more poured in." End of quote. Could these words describe a storm that you've been through? I'm not talking just about a meteorological event, an actual thunderstorm, hurricane, tornado, tropical storm. Sudden storms often strike, and they come in many different ways, don't they? Winds of adversity blow into our lives. Fear all of a sudden knocks on the door. Even as a hurricane changes lives and affects the future of families, so also these storms of life can truly be transformative. There are financial storms. Honey? We're broke. I don't have the money to pay the bills. Medical storms. It's your doctor. He said he needs to see you in the office right away. Marital storms. I'm not sure I can stay married to you any longer. Spiritual storms. God, where are you? Have you forgotten me? Job-related storms. We're not pleased with your work. We need to talk. Emotional storms. Sit down. 
I have some bad news. There's been an accident. Well, human experience tells us that the storms will come and that we must be prepared for them. An illness, an accident, a disappointment, a failure, a death. It's been said, when it comes to the storms of life, we can all conclude one of the following things. We've just come out of one, we're in the middle of one, or we're about to face one. Have you been out at sea? I know we've got some cruisers here, but if you were out at sea, was it smooth sailing or did you run into some storms? See, I wouldn't make a good cruiser because I watch too many cruise YouTube videos of when those big waves come and the furniture is thrown around and people are having a hard time um, sit, uh, dealing with the sudden uh, nature of the, of the cruise. Well, if you've been at a ship, been on a ship at sea, you know how it feels then when all of a sudden you get out there in the middle of the ocean and land is not in sight and you know that the water is very, very deep. Water, water everywhere. You're in a different world. If anything happens, you're pretty much at the mercy of anyone who can come to your rescue. If all of a sudden the wind kicks up and the waters get choppy and it's no longer smooth sailing, you hope that the captain of the ship knows how to head into the, the waves and the wind in just the right way to make it through safely. In the midst of the storm, it seems that there is only one way to go. Either you're going to go through it or it can take you down. Well, just when the disaster makes us think that slipping down to death is going to result, all of a sudden a hand comes to pull us up to safety. That was the experience of those disciples. When he spoke the words, peace be still, it's as if Jesus took the situation in his hand and they were rescued. They were saved. And so sudden storms will come threatening certain death and disaster. But storm survivors will confidently trust in Christ for life and peace. We all want to survive the storms of life, don't we? Have you ever watched the TV series Survivor? I haven't watched it recently, but it's been very popular, uh, airing on CBS first on May 31, 2000. 24 years ago. It's hosted by Jeff Probst, who's also an executive producer, and it uh, places a group of people in an isolated location where they must provide food, fire, and shelter for themselves. The contest contestants compete in challenges, including, including things that test their physical abilities and their mental strength as well. And gradually, one by one, they are eliminated until there is a sole survivor. I believe that Jesus wants you to be a survivor. He wants your life story to be the story of the survivor. He wants you to come out of the wind and the waves safe and well. He wants you to trust him and not be afraid. 2,000 years after that storm on the Sea of Galilee, people all around the world are still looking to Jesus Christ to save them. They're listening to his words, peace be still, and they're finding their way through the storms of life. Yes, it's true that Jesus was asleep on the cushion in the boat. According to his physical nature, he simply needed some rest. But as soon as the disciples called, he awakened and he took the situation under hand and he solved it for them. The problem was solved. The storm ceased. Or as one commentator says, the wind ran out of breath and the sea became smooth as glass. Now that's when Jesus turned to his disciples and he said, are you still, are you still, why are you afraid? Are you still not believing me? You still have no faith. Now remember, these men, 
had already seen Jesus work wonders. They had seen miracles. They'd heard his words. They had been given a glimpse of heaven through the ministry of the Master. And yet, in the middle of the storm, they were afraid. I suppose that's part of our sinful human nature, isn't it? That uh, we would doubt. But in this case, I believe that the disciples went from that cringing type of fear, oh my goodness, we're going to die, to a different type of fear. You know, Martin Luther begins each of the uh, explanations of the Ten Commandments by saying we are to fear and love God so that... So there's a fear of God that's not cringing fear uh, where you fear death, but rather this awe and trust that recognizes the power and the love of our Savior. I believe that that's the kind of fear that the disciples experienced after they saw Jesus. So you look at the, uh, the, the text on the back of your bulletin, they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? It was all starting to make more sense to them that this man, Jesus Christ, is who he says he is. He's the Son of God. And we can trust in him. We don't need to be afraid of those things that can end our physical life, our earthly life, because he is the one who came to give us life abundant and eternal. Max Lucado, in his book Fearless, says, Fear can overwhelm us. Fear corrodes our confidence in God's power and goodness. Fear unleashes a swarm of doubts. Fear makes us forget what Jesus has done and how good God is. Fear sucks the life out of your soul. That's why we need to go from that type of fear to this awe and trust that recognizes the person and the power of God the Son, Jesus Christ. You see, I believe that we're able to survive the storms of life because we trust in Jesus, who is the ultimate survivor. Think about Jesus' life from the beginning of his life. Jesus had to survive the storms. God warned Joseph in a dream to take the Holy Family and flee to Egypt, and in so doing, spared uh, Jesus and his parents from the sword of evil King Herod. Later, Joseph was warned in a dream that they should not return to Bethlehem, but rather that they should settle in Nazareth, because Herod's son, equally evil, was ruling at the time. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus was threatened and targeted by the Jewish leaders who saw him as competition and feared the loss of their prestige, their power, and their wealth. When they finally persuaded the Roman governor Pilate to have Jesus the Lord crucified, he proclaimed his kingship to Pilate. He did not hesitate to say, in fact, he is truly the king of the Jews. And many times he had foretold his resurrection. In fact, he never spoke of his death without also uh, speaking of his coming resurrection. And so God's son Jesus survived death in the grave because he is the second person of the Holy Trinity. He himself is the Lord of life. He could not be held by death. And because he lives, we too shall live. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes, Jesus is the ultimate survivor. And so all those who trust in him need not live in fear, whether it's a hurricane approaching or some other storm that has come up suddenly in your life. Trust his word. Know that he is able to see you through safely. Now, when storms come, it does not mean that God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that he's angry at you or paying you back. Yes, we know that there are self-made storms, situations we get ourselves into, but graciously, the Lord still wants to help us get through them, doesn't he? 
Sometimes there are those natural disasters and there are those storms that come simply because we live in a world that has fallen into sin. It's been ruined. God's world has been ruined by, by sin. In every case, however, whatever the storm might be, we can trust that the Lord Jesus truly loves us. He says to us, yes, my child, I care that your grandchild is sick. I care that your family is having problems, that your friends have deserted you, that your bills are high and funds are low. I care. I love you. Believe it. Now, it's been said that before the Titanic set sail, and you'll remember that it was on a perfectly calm and peaceful night that the Titanic went down, not during a storm, But prior to the sailing of the Titanic, they had a meeting with designers and other officials that lasted three hours. Two hours and 50 minutes were spent talking about the interior decor. Only 10 minutes was spent talking about lifeboats and emergency procedures. Well, you know how that ended. It is hurricane season. Be well prepared. Storms will come, threatening death and disaster, storms of many types. But if you trust in Jesus Christ, you are a survivor. For Jesus, the victor over sin, death, and hell, is in the boat. And may the peace of God which surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. We join together in the Te Deum. Let us rise. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son, also the holy ghost, the Comforter, you are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. At the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father, we believe that you will come to be. Our judge, we therefore pray you to help your servants with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your <coughs> saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heaven. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you, and we worship your name forever and ever. 
Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without <coughs> sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. Let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Be confounded. You may be seated as we receive today's offering. In our prayers this morning, <clears throat> we want to pray for Gina Price, a friend of Alan and Donna Taylor. Um, it's the mother of a friend, and she is suffering from stage four breast cancer. We also pray for Harlan's son, James Back, as he is recovering from open heart surgery. We'd also pray for Debbie Patton, as she will be having uh, surgery on her lungs uh, on July 9th. And Harlan, that's your daughter, right? Yes. Okay. We also want to have prayers of thanksgiving for the birth of Dan and Linda's granddaughter, born Tuesday by C-section, eight pounds and two ounces, 24 inches long, but I don't see the name. Bridget. Bridget. All right. Bridget well, Mattingly All right. Well, great. Congratulations. <laughs> More grandkids to keep track of their birthdays and Christmas. I know you're prepared, and that's a blessing. In addition to uh, these folks, we would continue <coughs> to remember those who have been uh, on our prayer list in weeks past. It is great to be back with you. Susan and I did enjoy <coughs> our getaway, including several days at what I will call a little bit of harp heaven, the American Harp Society National Conference in Orlando. And, uh, but we are great, grateful to be back. We <coughs> listened to a portion of the service last Sunday until the service at the Missouri Synod Church we went to in Orlando was going to be starting and we had to go in. And I'm not going to name any names, <coughs> but I did think of you because even though she came in in a wheelchair with me pushing her and we sat in the back and, you know, didn't try to av avoid anybody, we went in and out of that <coughs> church without anyone, including the minister, welcoming us. Sadly, that has happened to us before. Maybe it's something about us, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'm not bashful about singing, and I sing out wherever I'm at, which is partly why I'm coughing, I think, today. <clears throat> but it made me thankful for this church family that is so caring and loving and welcoming. I shudder to think that anyone would ever leave this service without being welcomed unless they sneak away so fast that they just don't want to talk to anybody. So we're grateful for that chance to welcome others, including those who join us by our live stream or the radio broadcast. I want to uh, call your attention to the uh, uh, senior ministry event this Friday. Uh, 
are young at heart. We're planning to go to the Coomer Museum of Art and Gardens. It's free Friday, thanks to Bank of America. So we are going to be going to the museum, and then also we will be going to lunch in the Riverside or the Five Points area. And the sign-up sheet has been going around, so I really encourage you to join us. Uh, we're going to have a nice, <coughs> a nice time. It is handicap accessible. And if you haven't ever been to the Coomer, it is really a wonderful museum. <clears throat> I particularly like the beautiful natural scenes from Florida, but they have all types of art, and it would be a day well spent. So join us here, quarter of 10 on Saturday, if you, on, on Friday, quarter of 10 on Friday, this coming Friday, and uh, if you'd rather meet us at the museum, you can do so at 1015. It is on Riverside Avenue. I would also call your attention to the fact that next Sunday will be our potluck for the month of June as we welcome some wonderful new members. So plan to uh, bring your favorite foods to share at the fellowship which follows uh, the service next Sunday morning. Let's rise now as we join together in prayer. And as you do that, <coughs> let me call your attention to the radio broadcast schedule. You'll notice that the theme for this week is surviving the storms of life. A lot of programming, wonderful songs, or uh, words and music that tie into the theme which we've had today. And if there were any fathers that were not in church last Sunday, there are Father's Day gift bags still available on the table in the narthex. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our, our only Savior from sin, Keep us from building our hopes on this earthly life with its sin and sorrow, with the sudden storms that arise, with the shallow pleasures and imperfect treasures of this world. Father, we pray that you'd give us an earnest longing for the day when we will be with you, uh, which is far better, when we're finally free from all of the effects of sin. In the midst of the troubles, storms, and uncertainties of this life, don't let fear fill our hearts or anxiety rob us of our joy, but rather give us a calm trust in your word. For Jesus, you still speak words of peace, blessing, and life. Having placed all in your hands, ourselves, our troubles, our cares, our needs, our fears, our failures, our sins, and our very futures, Give us the strength and the courage to go on, to meet one by one the battles of life, or to go through the storms as they may come. <clears throat> but grant that we may do so trusting in you, Lord. And we ask you to save us from all our foes who would oppress us in those things which afflict us. As long as we are earthbound, waiting for the blessed hour of our final redemption, supply us with the Holy Spirit and his grace that we may fear, love, and trust in you above all things, that we may live in holy awe and wonder at your great power to save and to bless us. While we journey here as pilgrims and strangers in a world hostile to you and our faith, guard and keep us <clears throat> safe from all evil that may threaten our bodies or souls. Keep us each step of the way, lest we yield to temptation, while of necessity we must be involved in earthly tasks and labors, let us not neglect our higher calling as laborers in our Heavenly Father's kingdom, proclaiming repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Take care of all of our needs, O Lord, but especially forgive our sins. Do not count them against us on that final day when we all will appear before your throne of judgment. May we know then as we do now that Jesus was judged in our place, that he was punished for us, that he bore in, our, in his body our sins on the tree of the cross. We thank you, however, that as your son, he is the survivor, the one who survived sin, death, and hell, and the one in whom we are saved. We ask you, O Lord, to grant your special blessing this day to Gina Price as she's dealing with breast cancer, and we pray that if it be possible, you would grant healing and, and renewed strength. We also pray, O oh Lord, for uh, Christian faith and for the 
the spiritual strength which will see her through this storm regardless of the outcome. We also pray for James and thank you that he's been able to have the open heart surgery. We pray that you would make him mindful of your goodness and thankful for your care. And we ask you, Lord, to bless Debbie as she has lung surgery in days ahead, that she also would look to you in faith and um, be grateful for your wonderful love. Lord, as we worship today too, we thank you for the gift of this grandchild. Uh, we know that life is a wonderful gift and we pray your blessing upon child and parents and grandparents as well, that this family would uh, be given uh, many, many years together, that they would know your love and the joy of this new life. We ask you, Lord, to grant these and all things that are needful, even as we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. <coughs> Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to the, Lord. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. We join in one last hymn that certainly speaks to the theme today Jesus, Savior, Pilot, Me. <laughs> 